All right, so we are back. And uh, today we are going to do something a little different. We're going to break it up a little bit. Uh, we've been going through the Carrie Thornley files, and then we went through some David Ferry files, which we're not even close to done with. We're going to be continuing uh, with the David Ferry files uh, on Monday. But for today, what I wanted to do was I wanted to talk about um, I want to talk about Oswald and uh, his defection to the Soviet Union and his potential connections to uh, the AE Balcony Project, which was a CIA project um, that uh, was in the works from 1957 onward, uh, allegedly launched between July of 1960 and 1962. Uh, however, when you start to dig into AE Balcony, you find that it is one in a long line <clears throat> of programs that was designed to get a spy into the Soviet Union. So, oh, let us let us continue. And so, this is um, these files you can find at archive.org, with the exception of AE Balcony File 0002, which took me some digging to find in a completely separate website. But for some reason, um, AE Balcony File 0002 was hidden. Um, so, A.E. Balcony. Um, this first cover sheet really doesn't really say much except for the overall goal of the project. A Project A.E. Balcony will support legal travel operations utilizing U.S. citizens and target it at Estonian, Latvian, and Lithuanian USSR. So, A.E. Balcony, project that ran from 60 to 62, same years that Oswald is in the Soviet Union. Uh, it's a project that will support legal travel, meaning they weren't going to smuggle somebody into the country. They wanted the person to go to the Soviet Union uh, legally, using legal options. All right, so moving on. This file, AE Balcony 0002, um, was removed from the uh, file system on archive.org and I had to find links to it from a Russian website uh, which linked back to the CIA's own website. So this uh, document here starts to go over the finances of what uh, AE Balcony were. Uh, Finance Division, Projects Branch, FI Ops, Budget and Fiscal Branch, FI slash SG, Subject AE Balcony has the account number 01340005302. Uh, breakdown, total amount of funding requested, $29,870. And this is for fiscal year 1961 alone. Uh, travel expenses of that 26,000. Operational expenses, uh, 3,250, totaling uh, 29,870. Method by which payments are to be made. Uh, I can't tell what that says. M something G advances. Uh, there would be some sort of cash advance, basically. Uh, this is uh, the date that this is signed for was May 20th of 1960. Now, note Oswald was uh, in uh, the Soviet Union by September of 1959. Okay, so that's about six months before, six or eight months before uh, this document was signed off on to get funds for AE Balcony for the year, fiscal year of 1961. Memorandum for Chief of Operations, Project AE Balcony. SR headquarters. SR, I don't know exactly what that means, but it becomes important because you'll find a lot of these documents that are covering travel to the Soviet Union under these programs, uh, you'll find have an SR designation to them. So, uh, one, the attached project originating in SR division is presented for the approval uh, for period July 1, 1960 through 30th, June 1961. The project is intended to support legal travel operations utilizing U.S. citizens and targeted at the Estonian, Latvian, and Lithuanian USSR. Authority is requested to obligate, and it's a redacted amount of money, from the DD-P-SR division operating budget. 
all in fiscal year 1961, subject to the availability of funds. The amount requested represents expenses attended upon a maximum of 10 legal travel agents during the approval period. So uh, during this year of 1960, uh, basically July 1st, 1960 to June 30th of 1961, they were planning on sending 10 agents, 10 operatives uh, to these Baltic nations. Now, uh, even though Oswald, when he went to the Soviet Union, first goes to Moscow, where does he end up? He ends up in Minsk, which is modern-day Belarus, which is a Baltic country, adjacent to the three countries listed in the AE, AE Balcony documents. <clears throat> the attached project outline sets forth the division's concept of the project and presents a breakdown of anticipated costs. This is an umbrella project, no agents being on hand as of yet. As agents are recruited, they will be processed for approval by DD slash P slash COP in accordance with the provisions of CSN 10-27. It is stated that since activities under this project will be targeted exclusively at the Baltic USSR, there will be no duplication of effort with Project Blank. Okay, let me reread that. It is stated that since activities under this project will be targeted exclusively at the Baltic USSR, there will be no duplication efforts uh, with Project Redacted, Project Blank. So obviously this is a project that's already going on. It's a project that's pre-existing. There's a project that they're concerned about duplication of efforts, meaning it's the same fucking program, but probably a different part of the USSR. So this program, AE Balcony, at an absolute minimum, is aware of other programs the CIA is running to get spies into the Soviet Union. Okay. Um, being that Oswald was there from uh, September 59 through 1962, which is right sandwiched in the middle of all the years that all these, and you, as we'll see as we go through these documents, uh, that the planning for this has been going on for goddamn years before Oswald ever got there. And it went on until uh, Oswald got back, right? When was he pulled? He was pulled in uh, the summer of 62. So he was obviously approved for a fiscal year budget following that. <clears throat> Four appropriate special staff components concur in recommending approval. FI slash ops remarks that when activated operations under this project should accelerate our efforts into the Baltic USSR. CCD notes that the project states that while in most cases there is sufficient legitimate reason for the agents to travel to the USSR, they would usually be unable to do so because of lack of financial needs. CCD recommends that in considering the adequacies of the natural cover available to each agent, his financial cover story vis-a-vis -vis family, friends, and the Baltic expatriate community generally should be given specific attention. So what they're saying here um, is that uh, due to limitation of funds, uh, that candidates ultimately should uh, be able to utilize natural cover, meaning they have fa friends, family, that kind of stuff to blend in. Uh, five, I recommend approval for Project AE Balcony as presented. And of course, the foreign uh, intelligence chief's name is redacted. And as I've already said, this was in, what's the date on this? Um, the date on this was in 19, May of 1960, right? <clears throat> All right, so uh, Cryptonym. A Cryptonym is a CIA code name. There's actually, if you Google that, there's like a, a, a great... Um, uh, online dictionary of uh, known cryptonyms. Operating Division SR, Field Station None, Headquarters Project. Field Station None, Headquarters Project. I can't understate how important that is. This is a headquarters project, meaning CIA in um, Langley, right? That's That's big time stuff. The attached project outline is presented for approval for the period of July 1st, 1960 through June of 1961. Authority is requested to obligate $29,870 from the DDPSR division operating budget during the fiscal year of 1961, subject to the availability of funds. Project AE Balcony. 
It is requested that Project AE Balcony be approved for the period of 1 July 1960 through 30th July 1961. Project AE Balcony is a headquarters redskin roof project designed to utilize United States citizens, primarily either in native born or naturalized persons of Baltic background, in mounted legal traveler operations into Estonian SSR, Latvian SSR, and Lithuanian SSR. In addition, consideration will be given to specific opportunities for piggyback legal traveler operations into this area. The provision of CSN 10-27 will be compiled within each instance and any renewal action request for this project will indicate the individuals so approved and the results of their respective missions. So, extremely important paragraph. Project AE Balcony is a headquarters redskin roof project designed to utilize United States citizens, primarily either native born or naturalized persons of Baltic background in mounted legal traveler operations in Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. Okay, why is this so important? So if you go back and you check the work of John Armstrong, what you'll find is that John Armstrong found duplicate records of Lee Harvey Oswald going back to 1947, the first year that the CIA was in operation. Okay, so Oswald had been living with a duplicate, not together, but obviously separate with another mother, Marguerite Oswald. This is all in my seven hour presentation, a warning from history. Uh, but <clears throat> basically, uh, Oswald was obviously part of some kind of project to raise a child uh, to then uh, exfiltrate him to the Soviet Union. And in the case of Oswald, they most certainly used a double. Now, the question is, where did the double come from? Where did the duplicate Oswald come from that they utilized from 1947 onward? That is the question that John Armstrong uh, puts forth. And the reason that's so important is because the A.E. Balcony project <coughs> and its previous projects... Uh, utilized naturalized American citizens, meaning citizens who were not born in the United States, born in Baltic countries, fluent Russian speakers, right? So John Armstrong's theory is that there was a child plucked from a concentration camp post-World War II or from an impoverished uh, Russian-speaking nation, possibly uh, in Eastern Europe or one of the, even one of these Baltic countries. You then have that child raised in the United States, from the age of, you know, whatever, 8, 10, 12. Let me see. He would be about eight years old since he was born in 39. And this started in 47, right? So starting about eight years old, you have a child uh, who speaks fluent Russian, raised in America with an American mother, learns to speak fluent English over the, you know, 10 or 15 years leading up to his death. And that's the uh, notion that the Oswald who allegedly went to the Soviet Union is not the Oswald who came back. Although the evidence shows that both of these Oswalds were in operation in the United States um, prior to 1959, leading up to Oswald leaving for the Marines. So the reason that this paragraph here is so important is because this would give credence to John Armstrong's theory that the duplicate Oswald was a, uh, a, a native Russian speaker. And that makes perfect sense. And then we have these CIA documents that back up that they had a fucking program to do exactly what John Armstrong was alleging. Two plus two equals four. You know, it's not really fucking rocket science. So let me continue. Um, areas of operation. United States, Estonian SSR, Latvian SSR, and Lithuanian SSR objectives to conduct mounted and in specifically selected instances piggyback uh, legal traveler operations into the three Baltic republics in furtherance of CIA intelligence collection efforts. In order to carry out this objective, Project AE Balcony will support a domestic spotting mechanism which will be enlarged and utilized in the first stage of the operation on a continuing basis. This domestic spotting mechanism will be comprised chiefly but not exclusively of United States residents of Baltic background. This domestic spotting mechanism will be comprised chiefly but not exclusively of United States residents of Baltic background. That would perfectly align not only with the timing but with the operation that John Armstrong is alleging had taken place where they had used one of these 
uh, Eastern European or Baltic citizens who they then brought to America, raised as Lee Harvey Oswald, who was obviously born under a different name, right? And I am completely convinced that this person who was arrested on November 22nd, 1963, is this... Um, is the duplicate, is not the real Lee Harvey Oswald. And obviously the real Lee Harvey Oswald, who knows what happened after the assassination, if they killed him or we went and changed his name. Um, but we'll, I'm going to have to get into that one day because I need to know. And when I need to know something, I eventually know it. <clears throat> this project is being submitted for the first time. The Baltic states represent a legitimate and important PI target. And additionally, they represent a fallow field for internal recruitment of an agent pool for the purpose of an early warning. Because of strong nationalistic traits of the people of the three Baltic republics and because of their spirit of kinship towards the West and their hate of communism and the Soviets, the populations of these republics represent an intelligence potential unique and distinct from that of other areas of the Soviet Union. This potential can, of course, be best exploited through the use of individuals of the same ethnic background as those of the area being visited. There will be no duplication of effort between this project and the SR-10 project blank. The SR-10 project redacted, blank, okay? Something tells me that if Oswald was involved in this, which he absolutely had to have been since they were working with this concept since at least 1957, and he didn't go till 1959, obviously he was in the loop here somewhere. Um, this redacted project, SR-10 project redacted, it is a very good possibility that that's the project that Oswald was directly connected to. Baltic domestic redskin operations are being and will be coordinated with SR-10. Tasks to spot, assess, and recruit individuals in the United States for legal traveler missions in the USSR, specifically in the three Baltic republics and mount such missions for the following purposes. A. To spot and assess, including the elicitation of biographic and personality information, Soviet Baltic individuals who indicate dissatisfaction with present regime. B, to select and develop in non-compromising fashion, including the establishment of bona fides, uh, specific Soviet Baltic individuals for ultimate recruiting uh, in place by other SR assets. No attempt will be made at this time to recruit such Soviet Baltic individuals by the legal travelers included in this project. Neither will the assets of this project accept any voluntary offers of cooperation or assist in any manner in the defection of disaffected personalities. So what they're saying is the people that they're going to send over there are not going to be the people to do the recruiting and they're not going to be the people uh, to turn over recruitment information. C, to procure through observation, photography when possible, and non-compromising elicitation, positive intelligence information on specific high priority targets in the Baltic republics. D, to collect operational intelligence concerning Soviet realities in the three Baltic republics, such as travel opportunities and restrictions, border and internal controls, communications possibilities, etc. E, to carry on those uh, CA activities, which are in line with the overall United States intelligence mission, but which would not impinge negatively upon the security of the given agent. Specifically, each agent will be properly prepared to counteract Soviet propaganda action to present a positive picture of life in the West and to carry on any political discussion which might arise. Secondly, given agents may be briefed to push current propaganda themes. Thirdly, given agents may be supplied with non-compromising literature to pass to the local inhabitants. And lastly, specific agents may be briefed subject to appropriate approvals to spread non-compromising rumors designed to further U.S. aims in undermining the Soviet regime and tactic, particularly in the Baltic states. Personnel. It is contemplated that all recruited American agents sponsored under this project will be assigned a Project AE Balcony numerical designation, e.g. AE Balcony 1, AE Balcony 2, etc. These agents will be contracted orally to travel to the Soviet Baltic Republics under the auspices of CIA. In each instance, the DDP approval granted in accordance with the provisions of CSN 10-27 will be cited as authorization for any payment. B. Training. The agents selected for traveler missions will receive extensive training and briefings by SR2 Baltic case officers who will seek such other assistance from various components of the division and or agency as may be required. 
Each agent will receive a final security briefing prior to his departure. Cover. Uh, natural cover, that of a tourist of Baltic birth or background visiting the land of his birth or that of his parents, and in some cases visiting with relatives in the area, will be adequate for travel in most instances. No other cover appears necessary at this time. However, should developments warrant the use of cover other than that of natural close coordination will be affected uh, with the Central Cover Division and the Office of Security as the need arises. So, let's do some speculation here. This Project AE balcony, which arised from 60 to 61, right, during the midsummer years, but was in preparation since 1957, whereas Oswald had been there since 1959. Oswald went there under the cover of uh, 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 someone who was dissatisfied with the American system and was fascinated with communism and wanted to experience the communist system. Uh, that story um, is so bullshit that there's not a single goddamn person that Oswald ever spoke to that believed that story. Nobody's going to give up the fucking pleasures of the West to go live in, in, in poverty-stricken Soviet Union in 1950-fucking-9. It's bullshit. The story's bullshit. And the CIA knows the story's bullshit. And I'm speculating here that A.E. Balcony could have been the evolution of the program as they realize um, that that cover story that Oswald used is bunk. It doesn't work. It's bullshit. Um, Oswald got in and they let him in because they knew he was a fucking spy. Period. They set him up with a wife who they who was also a spy and sent him home with her with uh, sent her home with him. Ha! The joke was on us, right? All right. Eight approval period and estimated cost. Approval of Project Eight E Balcony is requested for the period one July nineteen sixty through thirty June nineteen sixty one. Estimated cost. It is estimated that SR two ballistic may be successful in recruiting up to 10 individuals to participate in these legal traveler operations during the present operational season. Based on analysis of various available figures, the estimated cost of Project AE Balcony will be approximately $29,870. Um, agent travel, United States to Soviet Union and return, 1500 for each agent, 10 agents, that's 15000 uh, agent subsistence in Soviet Union, 280 for each agent. That's $20 per day for 14 days. So these were short-term trips that they were planning. Um, incidental travel while in the Soviet Union, 300 for each agent. That's uh, 10 agents, that's $3,000. And that uh, a bunch of miscellaneous other crap comes to $29,870. Operational clearances. Uh, appropriate clearances have been granted or are being processed. Also, in each case, individual requests have been or will be submitted to the DDP COP in accordance with the provisions of CSN 10-27. 10. Contacts and communications. SR2 Baltic case officers in contact with individuals for assessment and recruitment are identified as agency employees. The case officers have been documented with agency credentials in alias and the appropriate collateral documents. All personal contacts between the agents selected the case officer during uh, the training periods will be in safe houses or other secure areas. No communications will be maintained during the time the agents are in the target area. Each agent, however, will be provided with an accommodation address in the Washington area and a sterile telephone number to be used for contacting the appropriate case officer upon the agent's return to the United States. That just brings to mind the thoughts of the call to John Hurt in Raleigh, North Carolina. Each agent will be provided with an accommodation address in the Washington area and a sterile telephone number to be used for contacting the appropriate case officer upon the agent's return to the United States. In addition, provisions for contact with field stations for emergency purposes may be established if such contact is deemed operationally necessary or desirable. 11, control and motivation. The dominant feature of the proposed agent's motivation and thereby also psychological control is ideological emotional. On the one hand, they deeply resent the Soviet occupation of their homelands and therefore desire to do something positive against Russian Soviet communism. And on the other hand, many of them, as is the case with the majority of non-American born citizens of the United States, are highly patriotic towards their adopted country and thereby desire to help the United States in its battle against international communism, knowing that any stroke against communism is a stroke for freedom of mankind and freedom of their former homelands. Jesus Christ, how far the CIA has fallen. 
the prospective agents being, of course, U.S. citizens are also subject to all the controls which could be exerted normally by this government. Another important form of control is financial. In most cases, the agents here discussed would, aside from romanticism and ideology, very much like to visit their former homelands from mere curiosity and would be able to would usually be unable to do so because of lack of financial means. Our offer to underwrite such trips then leaves these individuals under our control and amenable to our direction. Coordination. 12. While this is a headquarters project, field support may, in given instances, be desirable, as has been stated in the closing portion of paragraph 10 above, so that coordination with the field will be affected if required. Headquarters coordination will be affected with the appropriate elements of SR Division and SR 10 in particular. Close coordination will be carried out with CI Staff, Office of Security, Central Cover Division, as may be required, FI Staff, and DDP slash COP. 13. Timetable. Assuming that the present breakdown of the summit conference does not affect the operational unduly, it is anticipated that the legal travelers under this project will depart from the United States for the target area via third countries, e.g. Finland, Sweden, Germany, during the summer and early fall of 1960 and possibly the spring of 1961. After exiting the target area, they will in most cases return to the United States as soon as possible. Subsequent to their return to the United States, they will be debriefed by SR2 Baltic case officers. In those instances where the agents are expected to acquire information that warrants expeditious handling, the agents will utilize the emergency contacts with field installations which will have been given to them prior to their departure from the United States. So, that seems to be the operational outline and fiscal budget for year 6061 um, direct from the CIA. For some reason, these files are hidden in the OSS case files, which is ridiculous. Um, unless, of course, there's a reason for that. Unless, of course, there were these <clears throat> black operations to get people into, this, into the Soviet Union, stretching all the way back to the OSS, in which case these would be a continuation of. Um, but that wouldn't really make much sense because of the break from 45 to 47. So, oh, well, let's move on. Okay. Uh, secret project approval notification. This seems to be a notification form of approval. Um, okay, so this, I can't really tell the date on here. There's a code number 15172 up in the upper right. Memorandum for Chief of Operations, DDP. Subject Project AE Balcony Renewal, SR Headquarters. <clears throat> so this is the renewal request for 61 to 62. So AE Balcony ends June 30th, 1962. When did Oswald come back from the Soviet Union? July of 1962, <laughs> right? So the program ends, Oswald comes home. Coincidence? Come on. Oswald went to the Soviet Union, stayed there two and a half years. He lived in Minsk, which is a Baltic state. AE Balcony is covering the Baltic nations of uh, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. Um, Belarus is right next door. Minsk, right next door. Uh, then the project comes to end uh, June of 62, and Oswald returns the following month. If Actually, if I check the dates, it's probably within a week or two. Give me a fucking break. He was obviously connected to AE Balcony. It's ridiculous to assume otherwise. The attached project originating in SR Division is presented for renewal for the period of July 1st, 61 through June 30th, 62. This project provides for conducting legal travel operations into Soviet Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and furtherance of CIA objectives. Project activities include collection of positive intelligence, support of internal assets, assessment of vulnerable ball... Uh, Vulnerable Balts, that's Baltic peoples, uh, conducting subtle CA activities and collection of operational data. Two authorities requested to obligate 31970 from the DDPSR division budget in fiscal year 62, subject to the availability of funds. The estimate includes 22900 to fund 10 agent trips to the USSR in return at 2290 each. God damn, $2,290 for a round-trip ticket to the Soviet Union in 50 years ago. Unbelievable. $3,500 for case officer travel, $2,230 for agent travel per diem in Washington, $750 for operational entertainment, $1,000 for operational housing, and $1,500 for the cost of maintaining a domestic spotting apparatus. So, as it said in the first set of documents, that 
renewal will be request renewal will only be available upon successfully proving that they achieved their goals or that there was some progress in that right so obviously there was some progress they achieved some kind of goals under AE balcony in the 61 1960 to 61 fiscal year hence they're renewing it for another year maybe they had no choice but to renew it because oswald was there they're like fuck oswald's there we got to keep this going until he gets back. So they renewed it for another year, and then he comes back immediately after the program ends. Uh, the attached request for renewal discusses project activities in the previous period and plans for the coming year. The division notes that the first two operations were not very productive from a pr positive production viewpoint, but were useful in providing some operational information. The third agent dispatched in the past period may have provided some significant operational data resulting from his contact with a high-level Soviet. The division notes that the U.S.-USSR relations since the last year have had a negative effect on operations. It further points out that the Soviets refused to grant visas to Balts who left their homeland after 1939. Okay, so they ran into a problem. They ran into a problem. People who were uh, Baltic who left, who tried to return, couldn't get visas. They're like, fuck you. You left, you ain't coming back to visit, bitch. Hence the need to develop an alternative need, an alter, alternative way to get someone into the Soviet Union, hence Oswald's story, right? I just don't buy that they didn't understand that until they were running A.E. Balcony for a, for over a year to, a two, or two years at this point, right? So since it started in 60 uh, and ran through 61, that's at least a year to 18 months. They didn't figure out that they weren't letting these fucking people in. That's some. Sometimes I think these people are just like dumb as fuck. Really, they're brilliant for being so stupid. Uh, it further points out that the Soviets refused to grant visas to Balts who left their homeland after 1939. In the current operational season, the division has run five operations with four others awaiting visas and the prospects of one or two in the spring of '62. In the current operation. In the current operational season, the division has run five operations with four others awaiting visas and prospects of one or two in the spring of 1962. Hmm. Remember, we only heard about Oswald because he was a defector. We didn't hear about anybody who went there as a traveling, as a traveler or a visitor, especially if they were of uh, Baltic origins, right? Fuck, how many people did we send there under this program? that go beyond the 10 that they talk about. Because this here is, is secret, top secret, but it's not black ops. This isn't black ops. This is actually just a regular agency operation. Black ops is completely off book. <clears throat> Four appropriate special staff elements recommended renewal of this project. FI staff in its attached memorandums calls attention to, the, to a number of factors. The project production of only two or three reports of marginal value, worsening U.S.-USSR relations, leading to a closer security screening of U.S.-born or naturalized citizens of Baltic background traveling to the U.S.S.R., and the unlikelihood of the present DCI restricting a restriction on the operational use of U.S. citizens traveling to the U.S.S.R. being lifted. In view of the above factor, FI staff recommends that the division place greater emphasis on the use of third country nationals. Division placed greater emphasis on the use of third country nationals, preferably not residing in the United States. Aha, so now they want to shift from using naturalized American citizens who are from Baltic states who were on the books as they haven't been born in a Baltic country. Now they want to shift that to people who are not living in the United States, not particularly United States nationals, uh, but people who are living in third party countries who are going to travel to um, these Baltic nations on behalf of the CIA. See, they're getting a little slicker on how they do this. Priority requirements for this area dictate that a renewed effort be made by all field stations possessing a capability to mount legal travel operations into this area. FI Ops is ready to explore with the division new ways of achieving this objective, including a possible special interdivisional seminar. CCG recommends that the division confer with it on the, on the cover aspects of each mounted operation. Five, I recommend renewal of Project AE Balcony as presented and invite the division's attention to the staff comments above and in the attached memorandum. Each agent case will continue to be processed in accordance with the provisions of CSN 10-27.
All right. Memo dated September 8th, 1961. Memorandum for Chief of Operations DDP through DDP PG Project AE Balcony. The FI states recommended a uh, recommends approval of the AI uh, of the AE Balcony project renewal request, but calls attention to the following factors. The past year's intelligence production from this project consisted of only two or three reports of marginal value. The worsening U.S. relationship with the USSR can be expected to lead to an even closer security scrutiny of U.S.-born or naturalized citizens of Baltic background traveling to the USSR. Present DCI restrictions upon the operational use of U.S. citizen travels to the USSR are not likely to be lifted under current conditions. So this is being... It's going to be... A, you can look like it's going to be approved for another year. However, um, they're making a point here that, uh, yeah, this project hasn't really done shit. And since relations are getting worse, scrutiny of these people is going to get harder. Uh, in view of the foregoing and in line with discussions held with FIOPS, with the responsible desk on this subject, the FI staff recommends SR Division place greater emphasis in the future upon the use of third nationals, preferably not residing in the U.S., to satisfy the requirements of this project. Priority missile OB and other PI requirements for this vital Baltic area dictates that a renewed effort be made by all field stations possessing a capability to mount legal traveler operations into this area. FIOPS is ready to explore with SR Division new ways and means of achieving this objective, including a possible special interdivisional seminar to take up this problem. Of course, all the names are redacted. Um, September 1st, 1961, Project AE Balcony, SR Baltic Area Legal Travel Operation Number 1. Operations under this project in 1960 provided only two or three marginal reports. 2. FIINT is unable to recommend renewal on this basis. So I don't know, FIINT, uh, Foreign Intelligence uh, Unit, perhaps. The chief is uh, FIRNT slash RE, redacted, of course. All right, we're back to renewal forms for AE Balcony for the second year. AE Balcony Project Renewal Current Objectives. The objectives of, the, of this renewal remain as stated in the original project to conduct mounted and in specifically selected cases piggyback legal traveler operations into Soviet Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania in furtherance of the CIA intelligence mission. Basically, this can be divided into the following categories. PI collection, support of internal assets, assessment and reassessment of vulnerable vaults, conducting subtle covert action uh, activities and collection of operational intelligence. Uh, changes, no changes. Intelligence production. Uh, three, during the past project year, only three operations were run under this project. A, two of these operations occurred in calendar year of 1960, and neither of the two was particularly productive from the PI point of view, since only two or three reports of marginal value were disseminated. One of these operations, however, include, involved an American-born Jesuit priest of Lithuanian background who penetrated, to some extent, the religious life of Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania. The information which he has brought back has been of some value in guiding the handling of a blank operation redacted uh, against two Soviet Lithuanian priests who are studying at the Gregorium. The other operation, also involving an American-born Lithuanian, redacted, uh, gave us an insight into the security measures surrounding plant number 555 in Vilnius. Other Lithuanian agents targeted against this plant during the present season have been guided by this information. B. The third operation in the last project year involved a naturalized American of Latvian background who was dispatched in May of 1961 and returned in June of 1961. The PI information which he has brought out has not as yet been disseminated. Preliminary assessment, however, would seem to indicate that this information may be of some value. The other information which this agent has carried out can be considered of tremendous potential value since one fairly high-level Soviet, although not formally recruited, has cooperated to the extent of giving our agent certain documentary information, which, if known by the Soviet authorities, would mean immediate arrest and long-term imprisonment of this particular individual for espionage activities. These materials, in all probability, are of marginal PI value, but if properly played, may assume highly important proportions uh, in the CA field. Additionally, this particular agent assessed five of his internal contacts as potentially vulnerable and certainly not worthwhile of recontacting. Effectiveness. 
Four, based on the above and five other operations which were run in the present season, but the production of which has not yet been evaluated, it is too early to judge the effectiveness of the collection and CA activities. From the OI point of view, these operations can be considered as effective. From the operational support, uh, point, support point of view, we've been able, through these operations, to locate some fairly good dead drop sites for support of internal operations, but because of the operational climate, no mission has been mounted. Having the objective of loading a drop for an internal asset, we feel, however, that during the present project year of activity, specifically next spring, if the international tensions decrease, we will mount operations aimed at resupplying internal assets. Uh, problems, as touched upon in the or original project, the U-2 incident and the breakdown of the Paris conference last year impinged negatively on the operations last season. Because of the resulting international tensions, there was a reluctance in the agency to mount operations involving American citizens. And secondly, again, as a result of these incidents, the Soviets refused to grant visas to naturalize Balts if these Balts left their homelands after 1939, which is the case with a great majority of Balt, uh, Baltic emigres, possibly with the exception of the Lithuanians. Because of these factors, we were not able to launch the expected 10 legal travelers whom we had recruited, assessed, and in many cases, partially trained. This season, we have run five operations and four additional ones are awaiting Soviet visas. It is anticipated that next spring, still under the present project authority, we will be able to mount at least one or two other Redskinners. So Redskin seemingly was a project that had been around since the mid-1950s, and we'll get to that, I think, a little later on today. Uh, but that project ended up being reorganized under the umbrella project of AE Balcony. So AE Balcony is a way newer project than Redskin, but Redskin was reorganized under AE Balcony. You following? Uh, liaison, uh, no liaison relationships. Uh, Intra-agency coordination. There is no intra-agency coordination unless one of the prospective agents happens to be an employee of some government agency, at which time the appropriate liaison and coordination on that specific case are undertaken through the appropriate CIA channel. Plans. Eight, the plan is to mount a minimum of 10 operations under the present authority with a view to furthering the CIA mission as stated under the heading of objectives. Then it gets into some costs. Uh, 31000 for the year of 1961 to 1962. All right. Um, moving on to AE Balcony 0004. Dated November 7th, 1961, Memorandum Chief, SR2, Subject, Baltic Redskin Review. In accordance with your suggestion, the attached review of Baltic Redskin operations has been made. Although the 1961 Redskin season has been covered in detail, for purposes of comparison, frequent reference has been made to previous Baltic Redskin operations conducted in 59 and 60. It is hoped that this review will prove for va of value for planning and review purposes. Okay. All right. We're getting somewhere. Let me reread this sentence. Although the 1961 Redskin season has been covered in detail, for purposes of comparison, frequent reference has been made to previous Baltic Redskin operations conducted in 1959 and 1960. Okay? 1959. So now we have AE Balcony, which has under it the Redskin program, which, as I've said, was reorganized under under AE Balcony. But before that, it was standalone. Uh, and so they were running Baltic Redskin operations in 1959. Who the fuck went to Moscow and ended up in Minsk in 1959? Obviously, fucking Lee Harvey Oswald. So now we have confirmation that the Redskin program, which was basically doing the same thing that AE Balcony was program, program was doing, but I think on a more specific basis, um, was operating at the time that Oswald was sent to the fucking Soviet Union. Hello. Notice you'll, ne you'll never hear James D. Eugenio or Greg Parker or any of those fucking shitbags ever talk about any of this stuff. Fucking losers. All right, so spotting nets. Lithuanian. Um, one, neither of the two 1960 Lithuanian Redskin agents was formally spotted for recruitment through SR2 Baltic Lithuanian spotting nets, but came to our attention in other fashion. Uh, redacted had previously been used by SR2 Baltic in Vienna in 1959 during the World Youth Festival, and AE Balcony 3 was a long-term contact of SR10 who was transferred to SR2 when his travel plans became known. 
At this time, 1960, the only spotters were political leaders of Vlick, who really did not appear overly interested in the entire program. Two, during the winter of 1960-61, a major effort was made to develop a Lithuanian spotting net on the eastern seaboard in the hopes that it would produce a number of redskin leads. Fourteen individuals were chosen, contacted, assessed, and recruited for this purpose in the large eastern centers of Lithuanian population. In addition to spotting three 1961 redskin travelers, the net provided background information on other redskinners and a variety of support type information. Regular contact was maintained through mail and telephone channels. During the coming winter, 1961-62, the existing spotting assets will be personally recontacted and reevaluated, and additional assets will be recruited in areas of Lithuanian population not as yet covered. Emigre leaders who are willing, uh, who are witting of CIA redskin operations, will also continue their efforts, which to date have uh, mu have left much to be desired. Estonian, the Estonian spotting net was initially composed of emigre leaders, redacted, 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 and redacted. In 1960, an architect, redacted, was recruited in Cleveland, and in 61, a college professor, redacted, was picked up in Akron. At least one other candidate is now ready for assessment as a spotter, and that name is redacted as well. Two, the Estonian emigre spotters proposed three candidates in 1961. Two of these did not pass the initial assessment. And the third, A.E. Balcony 6, the holder of a valid visa, was refused hotel space by in-tourists. Interesting. A 1960 candidate redacted was spotted and directly by a CO redacted. C. Latvian. Uh, Redskin operations into Soviet-occupied Latvia were greatly hampered in 1959 and 1960. Uh, because there was no independent spotting mechanisms in being. To eliminate the situation, 16 spotters were recruited and organized during late 1960 and the beginning of 1961. The spotters were well distributed geographically throughout the entire United States. No redskin travel leads as such have been received from the spotters as of yet, but recontacts by the case officers have been made on a continuing basis. Included in the spotting net are the leading Latvian emigrate leaders and four Latvian redskin agents who were previously dispatched from Europe. These four individuals now reside in the United States where they are serving as spotters as well as subtle promoters of redskin travel. Hmm. It is expected that the net will become productive of leads provided uh, the present international situation does not severely limit tourist travel to the USSR. It is expected that one additional spotter will be added to the net shortly. Um, two, agent training, uh, agent spotting, assessment, and training. Uh, the following table provides all the necessary information concerning this element of red skin activity. Well, according to this, in 1959, they only had one Latvian red skinner, as they called them. 1960, they had one Est uh, one Estonian and two and 12 Latvian and two Lithuanian. 1961, three Estonian, seven Latvian, and eight Lithuanian. It then goes into the Redskin agents psychologically assessed um, zero until 1961, so none of them were followed up with after they got back. Uh, Redskin agents trained uh, one in 1959, five in 1960, and uh, ten in 1961. Then this document goes into the number of training hours. The number of training hours. Uh, A.E. Balcony 1, 2, 3, 1430, and 40. But here's an interesting one. A.E. Balcony 4, which says Latvian, doesn't have training hours. It just says field. So someone who is obviously deployed to the field. Now, do I believe that Oswald had an A.E. Balcony designation? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. It doesn't seem like it. He probably had a redskin designation. Um, B, it should be noted that on at least two occasions, the assessments of the OTR psychological staff provided drastically inaccurate. Um, A.E. Kilo and A.E. Balcony 14, uh, and in two other cases left something to be desired, A.E. Balconies 8 and 10. While serving the useful function, such assessments should be used as a tool and should no way replace the CO assessment. CO training and improvement. A, there is much to be said for having all case officers equipped with skills which would allow them to fully train, brief, and debrief a redskin agent. However, operating conditions in the United States make this virtually impossible in practice since the majority of training is accomplished on weekends during the month of May, June, and July. Experience has proven that a case officer loses 
his sparkle after four hours of instruction and that the agents also tire of hearing the same voice. Therefore, a senior case officer was assigned to the overall training and responsibility training responsibility and he called upon all other members of SR2 Baltic for assistance in lecturing surveillance and other practical problems. This team approach has worked well and post-mortem reviews revealed that the agents were well satisfied and felt themselves well equipped to handle their operational assignments. CSR2 Baltic also served a, a most valuable function that of a prestige factor and he normally was in no way involved with the actual training. He appeared following the initial case officer and psychological assessment at the final briefing. B. All of the SR2 Baltic personnel profited to some degree from the Redskin training and problems which they conducted and observed or which they participated. More than 220 hours of instruction were given during 1961. In 1961, some use was also made of Redacted and Redacted, both of whom gave lectures on Baltic reality with emphasis upon geographical areas they knew firsthand. Four, Redskin Travelers, Lithuania. Although some Americans did travel to Soviet-occupied Lithuania in 1959, they were primarily communist in political outlook and included no Redskin agents. Mm -hmm. This is where the cover story starts to come into play. In 1960, two agents were trained, debriefed, and dispatched, Redacted and A.E. Balcony 3, both of whom had been longtime CIA contacts. The former was a fully mounted operation, and the latter was of the piggyback variety, since the agent had received a travel grant from an educational foundation. In 1961, seven Lithuanian Redskin assets were in contact with SR2 Baltic at the time of their travel to Soviet-occupied Lithuania. Four of these individuals, A.E. Balcony 7, 8, and 9, and redacted were mounted operations. Blank, Lithuanian-born, renounced her Soviet citizenship before her visa was granted. Two, A.E. Balcony 12 and 13, were of the piggyback variety, and one, A.E. Balcony 14, was merely a disposal contact because of a certain CE overtones. All of these individuals, except A.E. Balcony 14, were given training and operational briefings, and all were debriefed upon their return to the United States. Latvian. In 1959, the Latvian desk was successful in dispatching a single Redskin agent, but because of the visa difficulties, no travelers were sent in 1960. In 61, A.E. Flag was dispatched to the USSR, and his itinerary included visits to Tallinn and Riga. A.E. Flag has been a contact of the Latvian desk for six years and has been attempted to visit Latvia for CIA since 1958. The frustration is brought about by his failure to acquire a visa in 1958 and his inability to travel in 1960 were compensated for and some extent through this year's trip. Okay, so this person, A.E. Flag, who had been part of the Latvian A.E. Balcony program, this person had been trying to get a goddamn visa since 1958, long before Oswald attempted to get his visa in September of 1963. Oh, that's the visa to Mexico City. But the visa to go to the Soviet Union was in September of 1959. This was long before that. In addition, A.E. Balcony 5 and her husband, see, they shouldn't give away operational details like that. Now, you know, A.E. Balcony 5 is a woman and her husband, A.E. Balcony 11, were dispatched by M O by K.O.G. after spotting assessment, recruitment and initial training at headquarters. Estonian. Although the date, uh, although to date there have been no Estonian Redskin travelers, A.E. Balcony 6 was recruited and fully trained in 1961. He was granted a Soviet visa in Stockholm, but since in tourists refused to grant him any hotel space, he did not enter the USSR. A.E. Balcony 2, a San Francisco engineer, was recruited in 1960 and was trained in Washington, but was not granted a Soviet visa and did not travel. Two other Estonians, Redacted and Redacted, who traveled to Estonia from Finland in 1960 and 1959, respectively, are American citizens and were debriefed but were not dispatched by SR2 Baltic. Uh, Redskin production. The Redskin operations into the Baltic area produced the following results. 14 dead drop sites were spotted in the Baltic capitals of Tallinn, Riga, and Vilnius. Several of them will probably be used to support internal cases, and the remainder may be used uh, operationally by SR9. 13 PHPI report resulted from the AE flag operation and several other reports. 
uh, including missile site locations, were received from other agents and were published as well, even though in mid-season CSR ordered that no more missile indicator briefing be given. Hmm. Interesting. A tremendous amount of OI, uh, including document intelligence, OI is operational intelligence, including document intelligence resulting from the operations, is being distributed to SR-6. Personality reports were received on about 100 individuals, several of whom appeared to be worthy of future recontact, reassessment, and possible recruitment. Other personality reports increased CIA's knowledge of interest and other communist officials in the Baltic states. First travel reports were received for the first time from two members of American Communist Travel Group from tour leader of a group of old people from group of old people from Boston. Uh, when comparing the limited amount of knowledge which SR2 Baltic has received on the Baltic states from previous Redskin travelers before April of 1961 with the knowledge which has been obtained in the past six months, it is evident that the Baltic Redskin season had a certain degree of success. All right. Operational and security problems. Uh, A, the Baltic Redskin programs of 1959 and 1960 were greatly hampered by the refusal of the Soviets to grant visas which permitted travel. The situation changed in 1961, and in fact, two operations, AE Balcony 6 and AE Balcony 10, were not mounted even though Soviet visas had been granted. Although Redacted claimed she had been, that's going to be AE Balcony, let me see, claimed she had been surveilled and AE Balcony 3 admitted he had been, okay, so A.E. Balcony 3 was previously identified as having a husband who was A.E. Balcony 12, right? So what are they talking about here? See, they're playing games. Plus, they recycle these code names year after year. <clears throat> uh, this is because of the strict defensive briefings, which were all given, as well as the strict prohibitions against utilizing spy camera techniques against making operational notes. The only evidence of unusual security force interest this year concerned AE flag is the briefing by customs officials in Moscow, and he exited uh, an AE balcony eight and nine's minor brush with a block agitator while using a Polaroid camera without CO approval uh, in a factory district in Vilnius. Uh, for the sake of the record, it should also be remarked that Redacted has been approached in the past by the UB and is distantly related to the probable KGB agent Ricardus Vagoskas, uh, currently a member of the Soviet delegation to the UN. Redacted was debriefed in thorough fashion upon her return, and although visibly shaken emotionally by her visit uh, to her parents and sisters, does not appear to, appear to be concealing secret KGB contacts. The only unusual aspect of her trip was that she granted a three-day visa extension, which enabled her to visit Moscow prior to exiting the USSR and following her 15-day visit to Lithuania. Her exit point was also changed from Leningrad to Moscow. In spite of these abnormalities, Redacted was able to account for all of her time in Moscow. Does not appear to have been KGB briefed. <clears throat> all right, then we go back into some fiscal stuff, which I really don't care too much for. Uh, potential 1962 Redskin travelers. Uh, SR2 Baltic already has a nucleus of Redskin candidates spotted and cleared for use in 1962 if the situation warrants. Um, here they have a list redacted of agents recruited for said missions. It is hoped that if conditions warrant, some of these people may be used in 1962 to load dead drops for internal ballistic uh, or internal Baltic cases uh, to contact, assess, and recruit Baltic residents who have as, uh, access to R&D information and long-range Soviet military and or missile plans and to act as CA agents whose... Uh, sole mission is to spread the gospel of democracy and, and truth while countering the Soviet ideology and the enforced ignorance of the Baltic people concerning international events. Internal Baltic targets suitable for contact or recontact. Uh, then it goes into a list of some other things. Uh, in conclusion, <clears throat> uh, the Baltic states and Kaliningrad Oblast remain a priority in military target areas and the Baltic people remain unique in that they are residents of the world's newest colonies. Operational activity in the Baltic areas has been historically been difficult because the Soviets refused to grant permission to Westerners to visit the area until 1959 and then allowed tourists to visit only Talim, Riga, and Vilnius. In addition, the Soviets have until recently refused to grant visas to residents of the United States who exited the Baltic states after 1939. They do this on the grounds that such individuals are still Soviet citizens and will remain so until they formally renounce their Soviet citizenship. 
uh, redacted did in fact f formally renounce her citizenship. Okay, so um, this is just we're going into some specific details on this AE balcony program. It seems to get lost in the weeds a little bit. But it just goes to show how much detail was being paid to operations which seemed to encompass the operations that Oswald was participating in. All right, so uh, memorandum, November 961, AE Balcony Quarterly Progress Report. This is the first in a series of quarterly progress reports covering headquarters projects. This is an FI report and will be followed by three CA reports covering AE Pole, AE Flag, and AE Basin. It is apparent that the period covered in this report was the most productive quarter in the AE Balcony history and resulted from the hard work and long hours of overtime of the SR2 Baltic section. It is hoped that all but one of the outstanding Redskin reports will be completed within the next month. The redacted report uh, will be considerably delayed because of other priority activity. Within the next two or three days, a summary report will be completed, which reviews the SR2 Baltic Traveler program for the past three years with special emphasis on the 61 Redskin program. So if you'll notice, when you go through these, you kind of come across the fact that um, they have a lot of conflicting information over the success of the program, right? So you know, on one hand, we have information that indicates that there were uh, only three reports that provided very minimal information in the 60 to 62, 60 to 61 uh, fiscal year. However, you go back through there and you in this last document, and it kind of shows you that they're trying to say that there were all kinds of successes happening, right? So yeah, um, kind of hard to figure what they're getting. So what I'm getting from this is that the project was ultimately a fucking failure, but they were continuing to try to milk it for whatever funds they could to see what they could get from it. But obviously the project came to an end in 1962 and you don't see really any mention of Redskin or any of this stuff post 62, meaning Kennedy got killed and they shut the shit down immediately. All right. So um, I figured I'd be further along in these documents than I already am. So what I'm going to do is we're going to leave it right here. Um, and we're going to pick up on these AE Balcony documents on Monday, actually. David Ferry's going to have to wait because this stuff is pretty fascinating. Um, but thanks for tuning in, and I will see you guys all on Monday. Have a great day.